wanted to share with you um, this concept of crowd mapping that geographers have been using um, in disaster zones to help with emergency planning. Um, it's also being used for um, political movements in different parts of the world or um, figuring out about crime, but you can also use it as like a way in a community to gather information about local resources or activities. So there's, there's different sites and different ways people can create their own programs, um, and I can show you some simple ones today that are available. But basically you can, through your phone or on the computer, like upload photos or information to the website and then it generates um, points of interest and kind of explains things. So um, this, this video is good. Do we have time to watch a few minutes of it? Yeah. Because they'll explain it pretty well. Imagine a way for people all over the world to tell the story of what was happening to them or around them during a disaster or emergency situation. It would need to be easy to use, something that almost anybody can do, and it would need to be deployable worldwide. And that's why we've created Ushahidi. Ushahidi is the Swahili word meaning <coughs> testimony or witness. Born from the post-election violence in Kenya in 2008, Ushahidi kept Kenyans current on vital information and provided invaluable assistance to those providing relief. It was deployed in the Democratic Republic of Congo to monitor unrest. Al Jazeera used it to track violence in Gaza. It was used to help monitor the 2009 Indian elections and to help gather reports globally about the recent swine flu outbreak. Anybody can contribute information whether it's a simple text message from an SMS-capable phone, a photo or video from a smartphone, or a report submitted online, Ushahidi can gather information from any device with a digital data connection. After a report is submitted, it's posted in near real time to an interactive map that can be viewed on a computer or smartphone. But the most powerful feature Ushahidi offers is the ability to take the core application and deploy it yourself to suit your community's needs. Since Ushahidi is open source, anyone can improve the service in any way they see fit. Our growing community of developers are constantly at work improving Ushahidi to bring it to as many people as possible, including working to bring native applications to today's most popular mobile devices. With Ushahidi, it's easier than ever to get critical and timely information to those that need it most, on a platform that almost anybody can use. That's Ushahidi. Okay, so one of the ways that I've been using it for local mm -hmm. gardens is on this website, Falling Fruit, that allows you to pinpoint um, locations of edible um, foods. So let's see, go to the map. And we'll zoom in. It uses Google Maps, yeah. and you can see that there's all of these points that other people have um, created too. And you can click on any of them, and there's like that's a pomegranate tree, <coughs> and there's lots more information that you can add. That you can upload pictures um, and other data, like what um, the address is. Um, a description of it, what season it fruits in, um, if there's access, like if a tree branch is hanging over a wall or um, or if it's on public land or something. So it gives you a way for this like very specific use for people to be able to source where there might be free available food sources in our area. So I've been putting some of our campus gardens on there and um, just random plants because you can zoom in very close. Oh, here's the University of New Mexico and get really specific about um, uh, where the locations kind of are. So you can see the duck pond and all of that, and these ap apple tree and pinion pine and everything right on our campus. Um, but so for our group, I thought it might be kind of cool to use this website, CrowdMap, which is through that Ushahidi software. And I 
put up this posting for the Global Gardens exhibit. And when you say expand map, it um, is showing a whole bunch of dots for some reason. Um, maybe because I'm not in the steam of Mexico. website that you guys are on for Steam New Mexico? Did I type right? Steam and M slash? Uh, Steam and M. Because I made a specific Oh, map. it's dot com slash map slash Steam and M. Okay. Okay, so here's our map specifically. Um, so yeah, we can go to expand map. And it shows our one location right now where we have an event at the University of New Mexico. So you can, we can type in any address if we go to create a post. Um, we can write something about it. This little dot is indicating the location, so you can search by an address and put it in. Is there, is there an event I could use an example or a place if we want to create one? I don't think ours has a, a location yet. Okay, well. Oh, yeah, yeah, I have one. Okay, so April 13th and 14th at the New Mexico Museum of History. Um, it's like a biocultura. It's a I love life. symposium called yeah. I Love Life. So those are the, uh, at the, the New Mexico history Museum. Also, probably say Palace of the Governors, maybe. I mean, right. it's the same area. I mean, if we had the address, we could type it in specifically. Mm -hmm. um, well, 113 Lincoln Avenue, Santa Fe. too, this icon, so you could upload the flyer like I did, or whatever you want from the computer, and then you just go ahead and publish it. And a new marker should appear at that address. If it picked it up, it was kind of unclear whether it was getting that or not, so we might have to go back and um, see. The other thing that you can do to make this easier if we wanted to use it, I know where we maybe have an Instagram, is that you can connect it to your Instagram or Twitter. So if we are updating that with any information, we can make it so it automatically imports the posts to the map. And oh, wow. it could kind of, I think it could be useful because we're kind of all spread out. We do a lot of events across the state, but you don't necessarily, it's harder to tell that without like a visual documentation of that where all of our different events are taking place. So um, that's what I was going to show you guys. <laughs> Does yeah. this like differentiate between time? So like since our event was in October or April? I don't see like a calendar setting, but there's posts as things like go on. Okay. So. It would kind of just document all of them. Okay. Oh, yeah, it looked like it 
posted it, but it posted in a weird location. Okay. Yeah, I'll have to go back and figure out why I didn't pick up the address, but it will. I just probably didn't type it correctly. So, yeah, it looked like it, it, it put it like in the South Valley. Um, so, comments, questions? The Falling Fruit project, so that was an art project that was done by somebody in San Francisco, is that is that right? I had I heard the Falling Fruit, no? Okay. Um, and that's a Google Map thing. Yeah, it's through, yeah, fallingfruit.org. I mean, you can look anywhere that you want to in the world. You saw, like, people use it all over the place. Um, you can filter it with the types of tree or fruit. See, there's like hundreds of thousands of entries. So in the computational sustainability class, we do a lot of interactive media kind of projects like that. And a lot of the students like to do map-oriented stuff. And they'll do, they will program Google Maps for mm -hmm. um, phones, uh, for Android and iPhone and stuff. And it's, you know, it's not, definitely not as easy as using Yusuhiti um, to put something together, but yeah, you know, it's it's possible to. Yeah, you can definitely do it. Yeah, which is what they did here, mm -hmm. of course.